In this video, we'll solve problems where we're given an equation for the derivative of the function and we're given an initial condition, something like f of 1 equals 7, and we have to find the function f of x. In this first example, suppose g prime of x is e to the x minus 3 times sine x, and g of 2 pi is 5. We need to find g of x. Well, g of x is an antiderivative of e to the x minus 3 sine x, so g of x is of the form e to the x plus 3 cosine of x plus a constant c. That's because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, the derivative of cosine x is minus sine x, and the derivative of a constant is just 0. Now I need to find the value of the constant c that makes this initial condition come true. If I plug in 2 pi for x, I get e to the 2 pi plus 3 times cosine of 2 pi plus c, and that needs to equal 5. Since cosine of 2 pi is 1, I have that e to the 2 pi plus 3 plus c equals 5, and so c is equal to 2 minus e to the 2 pi. So my function g of x is equal to e to the x plus 3 cosine x plus 2 minus e to the 2 pi. In this example, we're given the second derivative of f, and we're given two initial conditions. f of 1 is 0, and f of 0 is 2. To start, I'm going to rewrite f double prime of x in a more manageable form. By distributing, I get the square root of x times x minus the square root of x over x, and rewriting with exponents, we get x to the 3 halves minus x to the minus 1 half. Next, I'm going to find f prime of x, which is the antiderivative of f double prime of x. So f prime of x, using the power rule for antiderivatives, I raise the exponent of 3 halves by 1 to get 5 halves, and then divide by the new exponent, 5 halves. Similarly, I raise negative 1 half by 1 to get 1 half, and divide by the new exponent, 1 half. And I'll add on a constant c. Let me simplify a little here. Instead of dividing by 5 halves, I'll multiply by 2 fifths, and instead of dividing by 1 half, I'll multiply by 2. Now I've got an expression for f prime of x, but I need an expression for f of x, which is the antiderivative of f prime, and so I'll anti-differentiate again. So now I have 2 fifths times x to the 7 halves over 7 halves minus 2 times x to the 3 halves over 3 halves. The antiderivative of a constant c is c times x, and then I'll add on a new constant, d. After simplifying a bit, I'm ready to use my initial conditions in order to solve for my constants c and d. When I plug in 0 for x, all my x terms vanish, and I'm just left with d. So d has to equal 2. So I can rewrite my function, setting d equal to 2. And now my second condition says that f of 1 equals 0. So plugging in 1 for x, I get 4 30 fifths minus 4 thirds plus c plus 2, and that has to equal 0, which means that c is negative 2 minus 4 30 fifths plus 4 thirds, which simplifies to minus 82 100 fifths. If we plug that in for c, we get a final answer for f of x, and that finishes the problem. In this final example, we're not given any equations, so we have to make them up ourselves. We're told that we're standing at the edge of a cliff at height 30 meters. We throw a tomato up in the air at an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. 
the tomato then falls down to the ground due to gravity, and we want to find how long that takes and what its velocity is at impact. We know that the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared if we're working in metric units. The similar figure, if we're working in units of feet, is negative 32 feet per second squared. The negative sign is because gravity is pulling objects down towards the ground in the negative direction. We're also given the initial condition that velocity at time zero is 20 meters per second. That's a positive velocity because we're throwing the tomato up. And we're told that the initial position, s of zero, is 30 meters. So let's start with the equation that acceleration is negative 9.8. In other words, s double prime of t is negative 9.8. Therefore, s prime of t is negative 9.8t plus a constant, c1. And from my initial condition about velocity, I know that s prime of zero is 20. So in other words, s prime of zero is negative 9.8 times zero plus c1, that has to equal 20, which means that c1 is equal to 20. Substituting in 20 for c1, I can rewrite s prime of t. Now I can find s of t, the antiderivative of s prime, and that's going to be negative 9.8 times t squared over 2 plus 20t plus a second constant, c2. Using my second initial condition, s of 0 equals 30, I can plug in 0 for t and get an expression that equals 30. Since all the terms drop out besides the c2, that tells me that c2 is 30. And so I can find my equation for position by substituting 30 for c2. Now I want to find out how long it takes the tomato to hit the ground. So that's going to be the time when s of t equals 0. Setting 0 equal to my expression for s of t, I can use the quadratic formula to solve for t, and I get t equals approximately negative 1.17 or 5.25. The negative time doesn't make sense for the problem, so I'm left with a time of impact of 5.25 seconds. Now to find the velocity of impact, I need to plug that time into my velocity equation. In other words, my equation for s prime. So s prime of 5.25 is 9.8 times 5.25 plus 20, which simplifies to negative 31.45 meters per second, probably enough to squash the tomato. And that's all for this video on finding antiderivatives using initial conditions.